Hey everybody, Kitty here again. I'm just gonna give you guys another quick tutorial on getting Wavelink to work in slobs. So if you guys watch my other video, you'll see that you do kind of need some tweaks and hacks to get it to work with slobs if you are running on a multi-system setup. Uh, the other way that I had does work, however, depending on the volume of your game sound, you may end up having some issues with sound distortion, which is potentially caused by feed feedback. Now, this is the problem that Elgato themselves is concerned about, is the feedback issue. So I figured out how to get this to work without that problem. There's some downsides, but the good news is, is that it works. And the reason why this is important, so I did get another response from Elgato. I asked them specifically which of their cards um, which of their capture cards actually worked with the Wavelink software. And the sad news is only two of them actually work with the Wavelink software. Uh, so only their UVC and their Camlink work with the Elgato software. So I'm just going to show you really quick. So you can see here... Um, they do say that the only three of their devices that do work with Wavelink are the Camlink 4K, the HD 60S Plus, and the 4K 60S Plus. I believe these are all of their external cards, excluding the HD 60S. Their solution is that Wavelink should actually be set up on your gaming PC. Now, there's two large issues with this. The first is that... If you're like me and you have several Elgato pro products, not just your Wave microphone, you might have a Stream Deck that you're looking to use to control both your microphone, your Wavelink software, as well as your streaming software of choice. As you guys can see, I use Streamlabs OBS, but whatever you use, you're probably looking to use your Stream Deck for that. You may also be looking to use your Stream Deck to do things like run ads or play sound clips or send messages to the chat. The problem with using Wavelink and your microphone from the gaming PC is that you now either need two stream decks or you're gonna be cutting either your Wavelink control off of your stream deck or everything else off of your stream deck. I personally don't think this is an acceptable solution. I have fallen in love with my Stream Deck as somebody who never thought that she needed it. It has now become integral to my streaming process and I can't go without it. So the other downside, and this is even bigger than the issue with splitting everything onto the streaming PC is what if you're not a PC streamer? <laughs> if you are a console streamer, that solution does not help you at all all. There is nothing you can do as far as Elgato is concerned, apparently, if you are a console streamer. So I didn't accept that answer. And I was determined to find another solution. And I found it. So again, this solution isn't ideal either. You unfortunately do not pass your sound from your capture card through Wavelink and then back to slobs. That's what caused is distortion. So again, if you aren't that concerned with the distortion, if your game volume is low and that's not going to be an issue for you, then check out my other video because that video explains how to do that side of things. What this is going to show you how to do is how to bypass Wavelink entirely for your Elgato input and your Streamlabs input. So what you need to do is, in order so that you can hear everything, you're still going to want to have slobs in here. So I set it to the system one because I don't want system sounds playing through my stream anyways, or even on the stream PC. System ha sounds have no place on my stream PC. So I just renamed it to slobs. You're going to go here to get to your sound settings, and you're going to go through here and you're going to look for OBSX64. Now, this might be something else. It'll be whatever process is for running your streaming software. And you're going to set it to Wavelink, whatever channel you're using for slobs. Uh, so again, I'm using Wavelink system. We're going to set that to Wavelink system. What this is going to let you do is this is going to let you hear the stream. 
So this is going to let you hear your own game. That's that side of everything. Everything else is done entirely outside of Wavelink. So this took a little bit of finicking for me, and I'm going to show you what I did. I don't know how many of these settings are actually necessary, but I did find that I didn't get everything to work consistently until I had all of these things set at once. So the first thing you're going to do is if you've read a lot of the Wavelink tutorials, they have probably said to go into your settings, to your audio settings, and to disable your audio device, your desktop audio device. Now, in order to get this method to work, you actually need to keep this enabled. You're going to set it to default. You want to make sure that it isn't set to your headset. What happens if it's is that if you look down here and this actually says your headset, you're going to your stream is going to hear everything that comes through your headset. And this caused me no end of headaches when I was trying to figure this out. But if this says desktop audio, we're going to go to properties and you can see everything's just on default. Then what happens is your streaming sound will come just through this. Slobs is still passing it on to the, the Wavelink software so that you can hear it yourself with your mix and you can control the volume for yourself through Wavelink. The only downside of this is that you're not going to be able to control the volume of the game sound that your stream hears through Wavelink. Uh, some other things that I ended up changing just to make sure that everything went smoothly is I have this here currently set to output desktop audio. And then I checked use custom audio device and I set it to game capture HD 60s audio. Again, I don't know if all of that is necessary. I just found that when I was doing tests, nothing worked and I would keep getting sound from Wavelink just because it was coming through the headset uh, playing through slobs. And so that's not what you want at all. It's really that simple. That's all there was to it once we actually got down to it and um, figured the settings out. So again, you want to go into your audio settings. You want to make sure that desktop audio device one is turned on and set to default. Your mic auxiliary device will be set to Wavelink Stream, uh, Elgato Wave 1 or Wave 3, whatever you're using. But this is the big one is desktop audio device one set to default. And then uh, I have it set to output desktop audio direct sound. I have checked use custom audio device and I have checked game capture HD 60s. And then what happens is then this way when I unmute this, you guys can hear the audio sound from the game. So I really hope that this is helpful to some people. Unfortunately, as I said currently, this isn't going to work as we were probably all hoping for multi-system streamers. That said, doesn't mean we can't get it to work. Uh, hopefully Elgato finds a workaround to deal with the feedback issue that they're currently experiencing. Uh, but until then, hopefully this helps everybody stream and take advantage of this absolutely phenomenal mic. I do want to point out that while I disagree with how silent Elgato is being on this issue, this mic is still well worth the cost. Thank you guys so much. If this video was helpful to you, please consider liking, subscribing, and commenting down below. You can also check out the Wave link in action on my Twitch channel. Uh, link will be down in the comments. Thank you very much for watching, guys. Bye.